What's going on? It's Glendon Cameron from The Corporate Citizen, where we teach people how to run and set up businesses. And with that, I'm getting ready to do a lot of business related content, how to get customers, how to brand yourself. This is what we're going to focus on. I'm not letting all that other silly shit go. I'm going to focus on building businesses and I'm going to explain to you you saw the title, you know we're about to get into it. Today I decided to quit Toro. And I'm going to get into why. I've been doing Toro for four months and I've been doing Hire Car for four months. This is my fifth month in the business, right? And frankly, I'm gonna say something. I don't really like Toro. I wasn't going to do this video and still try to rent cars on video on Toro because you never know who would see it. But honestly, I've had a few rental clients that I liked, but the reality is most of them I don't like. I just don't like them and I don't believe in doing a business that you don't enjoy. And for the most part, I don't enjoy Toro rental guests. Give you an example. Last weekend, a girl rented a car. And this is a 2011 BMW 335i. And I bought the car, I rode on it, I did the test drive, it was fine. After I bought it, boom, ABS lights, check engine lights, all this stuff popped on. So I take it to my mechanic, and he looks at the car and he says, it doesn't need brake pads. I, I mean, the brake pads are really thick. I can see it from here. So it was a speed sensor. And they replaced the seat, speed sensor, the lights went out, the car was fine. Well, guess what? The other speed sensor went out, so it did the same thing it did to this rental. And this chick actually said the brakes were grinding. I knew for a fact, and I actually told her, I said the brakes are not grinding. I had the car checked out. When it did that, it's a speed sensor, so you're not in danger, there's no problem. And what did this trick do? She reported me to Toro, and they delisted the car. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm just like, number one, they want to rent cars that they can't afford. That's the first issue. Um, like, I'll be honest, if I wanted to rent out the drop top bins, all I have to do is lower the price and it would go out. But I paid, well, actually, I didn't pay $50,000 for the car. That's one of the cars that I financed because I wanted to run an experiment. Because that $50,000, I could buy five cars for a hire car with $50,000. So I didn't want to invest 50,000 cash just for one car on an experiment that I really didn't know how it was going to work out. And I'm really glad that I did that. I am really glad that I did that. So that car has been commissioned. It's in the garage right now. So instead of having the BMW X5 and the Porsche, now I've got three cars. I got me a drop top Benz. And I, I got to admit, it's a fun car to drive. I can't wait until it gets cool and then just be cruising down the house. I, I, I actually am starting to really like this car. And this is one of the things. When you rent out a car on hire car or a Toro, you cannot be emotionally attached to it at all because it's going to get messed up. It's going to get dinged. It's going to get nicked. People just don't care. So I could rent this car out consistently if I would lower the price. But uh, the other day, I went on a date last night when I was driving up to the girl's place. And I was like, man, so that's a beautiful car. It's a car that I consistently get compliments from. And I'm just sitting there like, I am not going to mess this car up, rent it out on Toro. I just know. And I, I never rent it out on hire cars. So I'm getting ready to remove it from both platforms. Because fortunately for me, I have that option because I'm going to tell you what I'm getting ready to do. So uh, today I went on the Toro platform. I removed cars. And um, if by some strange twist, I left a few, but I made them where you can't rent them. Because if I decide to revisit this Toro thing, which I don't think that I will, and I'm going to explain to you why. Um, I might put them back up there, but I don't really think so because uh, I've got like three requests for that BMW, which is at the shop having the speed sensor replaced on hire car for 70 bucks a day. I rented the car on Toro for 75 bucks a day. So, you know, 
Uh, what I'm getting ready to do is to focus. And I feel that this is why I made some mistakes because right now I regret buying all of the cars I bought for Turo. I'll give you another example. Uh, the drop top bins had to have a headlight replaced and it was in the shop and it was during a period where someone had rented it and I, you know, and it was like, it was supposed to be ready that day. And actually it was, but the Toro guest I actually made a video. He was an asshole. He was just like, well, you can rent this other car. And it's like, I want to rent something com comparable. I want to rent something I can't afford to buy. And like, man, the cranky hustler was getting ready to come out, but I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I just left it alone. And I was like, you have a good day. I left it alone. But that kind of stuff is these people want to rent these experience cars, AKA cars that I can't afford to buy and versus, because I, I did some research um, for you to get a Mercedes Benz from Hertz or um, Avis or Enterprise, that's like 400 bucks a day. So at 150, it's a steal. In comparison, and you have more flexibility because if you get a car from Hertz, you're gonna to have to pick up the airport where they chart, they tack on an additional 10%. So you're gonna to have to pay 400 bucks a day plus an additional 10% just to rent a car of comparable value. And once again, I already know, I was like, you know, so I regret buying that Porsche for Toro. I regret buying that other Benz and there's some of the cars that I got a good enough price that I can lower the price and put them on higher car. So what I'm getting ready to do is focus on higher car and focus on my independent agency. Cause someone left a comment, you're, you're running a template business. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm part of Toro. I was, oh, I was part of Toro. I was part of her. Yeah. I was running a template business. And if you saw my videos, What's the thing I've consistently said, once I get my insurance, I'm going independent. So this month, well, this month's halfway over. So next month I'm going to work on getting my dealer's license and getting my, uh, independent, my commercial insurance. Cause a friend of mine who's a dealer told me that once I get my dealer's license, then I can convert all of these cars. Cause I have a feeling that's something I'm going to have to do. And if I were to sell all these cars to a company that would trigger a sales tax on 30, 31 cars. That's, that's, that's like 12, $15,000 just to transition them from one company to another. That's, that's a big, big penalty. But he told me as a dealer, if I were to buy these cars as a dealer and put them into a company name, I wouldn't have to pay the sales tax. So we're going to test that theory out, but I'm getting ready to focus on like this weekend, I've came up with a new pricing strategy. Uh, I'm going to focus more so, and I actually feel since I'm not going to be trying to do Toro and hire car, then I'm going to become, you know, I made $21,500 last month on hire car. And if I focus on hire car and focus on getting my utilization up and focus on getting these cars rented, I'm going to make, because I've, I've always made more money on hire car than I did on Toro which is one of the, which is the biggest driver of this decision because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the Toro algorithm. Uh, and essentially, uh, I will tell you something I was doing that was working really, really well. And I'm going to share this with you because since I'm not doing Toro anymore, I really don't care. Um, one of the things I would do is I would go to the airport and pick people up versus dropping the car off because dropping the car off meant that I would have to Uber back or take public transportation. There's a picture of me riding Marta cause I was going to pick up a car because once again, the same trick that reported me to Turo, uh, she was running late and she's like, I'm gonna have to leave the car at my mama's house or I'm gonna have to leave it at the airport. Just messing up my plan. And I was like, you know, this, this plan worked beautifully. I had like 20 trips where I picked people up at the airport, brought them to the car and they brought the car back to my office and I took it back to the airport and then boom, this happened. And I'm sitting there like, okay. So that was working out really, really well. So I could actually say the car was at the airport. And here's the thing, guys, I don't have my phone, but I made money doing that because I got to deduct the mileage. So it was a cost efficient way that made me money, put money in my pocket and I was able to provide service to people and I had a, I had one, this, this chick, once again, 
bless her, she came in at 6.30 in the morning and I, I managed to get up and get down there and I was there waiting on her. Uh, I was actually five minutes away when her plane, plane landed and I actually drove up once they were coming outside. So that worked really, really well. This is something you can do. You can pick them up. And if you're properly set up, once again, we're going to, let's get into this. I'm an LLC. I have an LLC at EIN. I have an office. I have all of that stuff. Uh, I got QuickBooks. My assistant's going to be working on the QuickBooks to the next week. So we have all of this stuff in place where I've done, I think, it's like almost $2,000 that I'm getting in tax deduction money back because I was picking people up at the airport. So it was a beautiful strategy. It was working like gangbusters. And there's a shout out to Hawaiian Turo. And this is another reason that I'm moving away from Turo. This guy is in Hawaii, a vacation destination, a hot spot. And he was doing videos where he's making all his money, making all his money. Guess what? His Turo business slowed down. And he's in Hawaii. He's in Hawaii and his Toro business slowed down. Shout out to Hawaiian Toro. I don't know how you found me, but I'm glad you did. He, he's, he cracks me up with that. But he, even he has slowed down. And what I, and this is another reason that I, I'm quitting Toro now. I feel that it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And I'm going to be spending mental band, bandwidth trying to figure out Toro when I could take that same mental bandwidth and apply it over to hire car and make way more money. Because um, you know what I like about hire car? I had a girl who rented the 740 and it was because her car was in the shop and because I've been dealing with cars like right now, I've got the Acura in the collision shop. I've got the 2009 BMW with the bumper that was hanging off in the collision shop. And I know that once your car goes into a collision shop, they're having a a big issue sourcing parts, your car could be in the shop three to six weeks. And she's had that 740 out three weeks. And you know, cause she's like, you know, it's like, well, I'm gonna get my car back in a few weeks. And I'm like, okay. Cause when she told me what happened, she was in the accident and they had to fix her car. I already know from dealing with it that this was gonna, she was gonna have that car for a week. And she's had that car for three weeks. And consistently the shortest rental I've had with hire car has been four days. They'll say I've rented it for two and they'll extend it one or two more days then they'll bring it back. And that's been the shortest rental. So for me, I like the hire car business model more so than I want to rent a car I can't afford Turo business model, which is annoying. It's just like, like, like maybe it's just me. I don't know. Maybe it's the cranky hustler. I don't know. But I'm just annoyed with these Turo people. Like I had one guy who rented the uh, Mercedes drop top four times. He was a businessman. He liked to ride in class. He saw a good deal. He was a, he was a pleasure to deal with. And I've, I've, I've had some really good renters, but I've had a few assholes and I'm just sitting there like, eh. and typically with hire car, I've had issues. I've had the, the guy who rented my Porsche and sold it two days later, but now that I figured out how to manage hire car much better, because I've got like once I get the Acura back, GPS kill switch is going to go into it before I put it back on the platform. And it's reminiscence of my storage auction business. And I, I went through a similar phase because, you know, I was going out and I was trying to buy these big, nice, pretty, beautiful units. Right. And what I learned is when I sold things that people needed, I made way more money. People don't buy bedroom sets because they want a bedroom set. They buy a bedroom set because they need a bedroom set. People don't buy a washer and dryer because they want a washer and dryer. They buy a washer and dryer because they need a washer and dryer. Uh, people don't buy a living room set because they want a living room set. They buy them because they need a living room set. So once I started to focus on things that people needed, uh, our storage production income dramatically went up because I was selling to someone who needed it versus in the case of Toro, someone who wanted something. And I'm out of the Toro business. Like I said, you know, it, it was annoying. It was a pain in the butt. And like, what I'm gonna do is uh, these, you know, like the Porsche. The Porsche was like 25,000. 
so and I paid cash for that. So I've worked out some numbers where I can rent the Porsche on the hire car for a few months because I went to K Kelly Blue Book and my trade-in value on that car is 18. So we're talking about a $7,000 hit if I was to trade that in. So I'm just gonna put it on hire car, I'm gonna lower the price, get it to make some money, and then once it's earned that 7,000, then get rid of it and get two cars and put them on hire car. And that's what I'm gonna do with all of these cars. It's because once again, I, I went to Kelly Blue Book, I bought these cars at the height of the market, so trying to get rid of them, I'm gonna take a hit if I try to trade them, like if I sell them, I can probably sell that Porsche for about 23, 22-ish. And uh, I had someone who was interested in it and I may reach out and it's like, if you can pay me cash, because I'm not selling it on a payment plan. That's just hustling backwards. Because I would make more money renting out the Porsche than I would just selling it on a payment plan. So I'm getting rid of the Porsche. I'm getting rid of the 2013 BMW, which is just, this is the car that Savages had that, oh man, they, they messed it up. There's some wrong with the suspension that squeaks. And that car has made, that car cost me 18. That car's made three. I don't know what the Kelly Blue Book on it. I'll look that up later, but that's gone. So once I run out the Porsche, if the Porsche continues to run out well, I may just keep it because that will be, um, because one of the things I figured out, because this is why I'm focusing on a higher car, is I've got to figure out my pricing strategy because I've noticed there's certain cars that people have kept for months and there are certain cars that weren't. And one of the big issues, and this is why I have the, well, the white uh, BMW X5, I'm probably not going to really drastically lower the price on that because I kind of like that car, but I've got, uh, a 2009 X5 that I can I can rent that buck I can rent because I bought it at the good price. It only cost me 12, so I can rent it out at 50 bucks a day, and within a year pay that sucker off. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to lower the price because um, winter is coming, and I just feel that everyone who's piling on Toro I just feel month after month it's going to get worse, it's going to get worse, and it's going to get worse because. The same thing that happened to Amazon FBA is going to happen to Toro. The same thing that happened to Toro is going to happen to Airbnb. All of these people are piling in. All of these guys have these courses teaching people how to do Toro and how to do Airbnb. And I feel, and I might be wrong, but I feel that the heyday for Toro is over. Toro is going to be saturated and you're already competing with a bunch of people who have their car on Toro who just want to rent out their car four or five times a month to defray their month, their car payment. They're not true business people. They're not true business people. And that's one of the things you're dealing with. And I, I'm like, you know, hire a car, totally different group of people. Uh, there's a lot of business people. There's people have multiple cars. They're trying to make some money. And I've got to work on the, the sweet spot for pricing and, and all this other stuff. So I am out of Toro. I am done with Toro because, you know, one of the things I was doing every day was going on Toro, looking at what cars were in the marketplace, what was renting out. And I am seeing across the board, people who are renting cars out really, really they slow down. Uh, there's a girl in East Point, she has like seven cars. Uh, every, I literally went to all her cars and it took me about an hour. And I just went ahead and see if I can reserve it for the whole month. And the whole month was open on her seven cars the whole month. So I really feel that Toro's just gonna get worse and worse. And now I understand why you guys love financing cars for Toro. I, I totally understand why you guys like, because if you finance a car, especially if you put no money down and then you get to put it on Toro and then let's say it rents out really well and you make $2,000 and your car payment's 500, you've made $1,500 for something that only is gonna cost you 500 bucks a month. However, I feel that once it gets really bad on Toro, and I, I really feel that this is going to happen, that a lot of people who have car payments are going to really struggle, really, really struggle. And it's, some people are going to get their cars repossessed because they're not going to be able to make the car payment. That's what I feel is going to happen six, 12 months down the road on Toro. And, um, you know, 
I'm going to work on going independent, getting my independent insurance and branding and stuff like that and work on these other businesses. So for me, it is a great relief to let Toro go. Like I said, I never really liked Toro because people were trying to rent shit they couldn't afford. I was just like, who? you know, I have, let's see. If I was to go to Vegas and rent a car, I would probably rent a Porsche. You wanna know why I'm renting a Porsche? Because I drive one at home. I'm renting something that I can afford. I would not be renting, uh, honestly, I, I can't drive normal cars. Like the Lexus that I have is really nice, but I would never buy it because for me it's underpowered. Uh, there's a reason I have the V8 M X5M. There's a reason that, that Mercedes drop top has got a twin turbo V8 in it. That sucker will move. And the Porsche, you know what it is. You know what it is. So I would rent something that I normally drive. I wouldn't be trying to flex or to stunt. And that was one of the annoying things about the Mercedes was it was we were coming into town on Thursday. We rent the car Thursday and we roll out Sunday. We would come in Atlanta and we would flex and stunt for a week for the weekend. And it, it was just it was just getting on my nerves because another thing is. Uh, I didn't set it up because I could have set it up where they couldn't have rented the car if, you know, because you could set it up where your hours where you're closed and they can't drop off or pick up the car because you're, those are the hours you're closed. And typically, a lot of people would love to rent cars on the weekend, love to rent cars on the weekend. I had like um, four people rent cars they're picking up next week because um, once again, this is another reason I like hire car. Uh, I've had people who are like, hey, yeah, I'll only pick it up Monday, even though it's like, that's fine. That's cool. That's cool. Because I actually took today off. This is the second Sunday that I've had off. And it's because I'm not doing Toro stuff. That Toro stuff was one of the things that I was having to work on Sunday. So this is the second Sunday and I'll get it to the point because once I get my utilization up, because I'm sh shooting for 90% utilization, once I get my utilization up, uh, I won't have cars to rent. So I won't be working on the weekends. And that my, my goal is to do whatever I need to do to get these cars out. Uh, and also, because I've had some of these cars for months, I can, you know, once again, this is where my storage auction experience comes in. I used to work in the flea market, and there was this guy, Danny, and he used to have this phrase, Stack it deep, sell it cheap. Have a whole bunch of stuff that you can let out and go at a good price, right? And I'm now I've got uh, my Acura, which I paid fifteen for. That car has made four thousand. Um, now some of my earlier the Camry, as you know, the Camry had to go to the salvage yard because it needs a new engine. Um, but as I move into this, this first year, I should get a return on capital. I should get 80, 80 to 90 percent of my capital back the first year. And at that point, I can rent those BMWs out at 35 bucks a day. And honestly, if it comes to that, I will do it. If that's what it takes to get that car out on a consistent rental, I will do it all day long because uh, I'm driving this business based upon data, not how I feel. And if those cars are paid off, and then my whole, my whole plan was to buy the car and rent it out for a year, then that moved to two years. It may move to three years, because if I buy this car and the first year is paying off the car and two years of profit, I can rent, let's see, if my computer's on, let me go ahead and it is on, ha <laughs> ha, it is on. So I can, let's do this. So let's say 35 bucks a day minus 15% times 30. It's 900, it's 892 a month times 12. $10,000 on an asset that cost me $8,000. So that's kind of where I'm going because, you know, I'm like, you know, stack it deep, sell it cheap, stack it deep, sell it cheap. 
and I'm seeing this because uh, when I rented out those Acros for 40 bucks a day, they consistently stayed out. They consistently stayed out. And I know for many people, you know, that 40 bucks a day, because Hire Car puts on an additional uh, insurance fee, which doesn't protect me at all, which is kind of a gank. But once again, I'm working on my pricing because I made that $21,000 with half my free fleet not consistently rented. So if I can get higher utilization, we're looking at $40,000 a month. So that's what I'm gonna work on. So the Toro thing is gone. I'm done with Toro. I'm not messing with it anymore. And I'm gonna work on my utilization. I'm gonna work on getting my commercial insurance. I'm gonna work on getting my dealer's license. Because, you know, between this and working on the corporate papers and stuff, and you know, Toro was taking a lot of time. And the most money I ever made on Toro was 1500 bucks. That's the most money I ever made on Toro. I will make that in a few days on hire car. One of the reasons, and this is another reason, like Toro, Toro doesn't like old cars. And uh, there was a guy who was doing the video and he actually pointed this out, that if you have an old car, if you're a host that's been on Toro since 2015, 2016, they will push people towards your cars. But if you're a new car, new host, and you have a relatively old car, like a 2009, unless you put it up there dirt cheap, that sucker won't move. It just will not move. And I, I had the 2009 BMW X5. It did not rent out. I had it for 70 bucks a day, then I moved it down to 50 bucks a day. It did not rent out, because I don't think that Toro was showing people that car. So that's another issue I have with Toro. You, you gotta have a relatively new car. Uh, I, I've got three 2008s that have less than 130,000 miles on. Can't put them on the platform. And another reason I don't like Turo, Turo wants you to sign this exclusive agreement that you're only going to have your car on their platform, but they're not going to promise you, they'll make you no promises. It's like, look, you sign up for Turo that you can only have this car on Turo, but we're not going to promise you anything. And I don't like that. I'm just sitting there like, Really? You know, there was someone that was doing the video talking about, you know, we're not going to break the agreement. We're going to have cars. On. Uh, essentially, I've got a Mercedes, a Porsche, another Mercedes, two, three BMWs just sitting, waiting on Toro to say, hey, here's someone to rent your car. I don't like that. Uh, I don't like that at all. So I am getting away from Toro, leaving it alone. And I'm going to focus on, because one of the things that I did last month, which really paid off, is I focused more on the corporate papers. So now that this is one thing that is off my plate, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to look at it. Because with Toro, you got to do a lot of research. You have to look at the marketplace. You have to see what's hot. And I know Jeeps. Jeeps do well. But I do not want to spend $60,000 for a Jeep. Because, you know, the, the whole... Jeep is a hundred bucks a day. So let's say you, you rent it out, you, your utilization is high and you make 3000 a month, still two years just to get your money back unless you finance it. And then, you know, you're just making that monthly payment and then you're putting the rest of that money in your pocket, which I feel is a little irresponsible because your goal should be get that car paid off as quick as possible because you never know what's going to happen. But like I said, I feel that it's going to be a total shit show in six to 12 months on Toro. And that is one of the biggest reasons that's driving, you know, because if there was plenty of money to be made, I would be there. Like I said, I'm, I'm all like, I feel that October, not this month, because um, based upon when, well, I don't know. I should make about 30,000 on higher cars. But like I said, I feel that I should do 30,000 this month on hire car now that i'm focusing on it and once again you know like i said i never really liked toro and the whole thing was just representative of flexing and flaunting and you know not my cup of tea not my cup of tea at all so with the new focus on hire car I feel that October, I should do like 40,000. And that's why I'm doing this, to make money. I'm not doing this to buy 
to drive a, an exotic car for free. Um, I feel that that type of messaging is harmful because if your whole goal is to be able to drive a really nice car for free, well, I shouldn't say harmful. I mean, the platform is what it, it's there to be used any way you want to use it. I shouldn't say harmful. But for those who are trying to make money as a business, competing against someone who wants to drive a nicer car for free to rent out their car a few times a month so they have a nice car to drive, that is going to hurt you in the long run. And I think there's a lot of people on the platform who are doing that. There's a lot of people who are just looking like if their car note is 600 and they can make 400 bucks a buff on, on Toro, that means their car payment is now 200. That's a win for that individual. So I feel, like I said, it, Toro's gonna be a total shit show six, 12 months from now. And once again, I don't think that higher car is going to be the same. Even though it is a template business, I don't feel that higher car is going to be the same because it's a different type of renter. It's a different type of renter because um, you can use some cheaper cars on Toro for rideshare or you know Uber instance. But you know what, what I've seen. You know, and I put this in my car rental course because what what I'm going to do is teach you how to list cars on higher car. I'm not even gonna talk about Toro because I understand what I need to do to be successful on Toro. I just don't wanna do it. I don't wanna put a $50,000 car on Toro for 90 bucks a day. I, I, I just, my mind is like, you know, R. Kelly, my mind is tell, I'm just like, that just, no, I'm not doing that. So i'm going to drive the drop top that's going to be one of my personal cars so now i say having two cars i have three and then i'm going to transition the other cars to higher car change up the pricing and that's what i'm going to do because uh i know and let's go ahead and say higher car turns into a total shit show i have an exit for that and that's going to be me getting my commercial insurance i already know that i can run an ad I could literally run a radio spot saying, hey, if you want to rent, rent to own a car, come to here, boom, boom. I would literally be out of the cars in two or three weeks. Uh, I would run that ad. So uh, that's my exit strategy if hire car becomes a, a shit show. And this is why I got to get my own commercial insurance and get that set up. And virtually all the new cars I will buy will have the GPS tracker on them. I'm not messing, I'm not buying it. If I don't want to put a tracker on it, I'm not buying that car. So I'm going to be primed because I feel that for some of these commercial insurances, they want you to have GPS trackers on the cars that you have on the insurance, which I, I make, you know, because like with the Porsche, if someone was trying to make off with it, I already know where I can find the Porsche, I can turn it off and I can go get it. So I'm not like overly concerned about that. But yeah, that's what's going on. Let me know your thoughts and concerns and everything in this, because I know a lot of you are listening to him 500 and other people, and you're going to go out and buy a car and put it on Toro. And uh, God bless you. I hope you make a lot of money, but I'm out. I am taking my ball and going home. So for those of you who want to learn how to run a real business, go ahead and get into the corporate papers. The corporate papers I teach you how to set up a holding company. I teach you how to set up an operating company. And more than all, what I've been doing, what I've been talking about, four weeks, four months, I've been learning and getting data points and collecting and finding customers. I'm gonna teach you that whole stuff right there. I'm gonna teach you how to do that. So go below, get in the corporate papers. The price goes up October the 1st, and I will see you guys in the next one. Link is below.